Okay, so this could be our introductory notes for DNA and RNA unit. Uh, this is a really uh, interesting idea. Uh, it kind of explains, uh, just gives you the a foundation of biology. And this is the idea of the central dogma. Uh, a dogma is like a belief, like a like a doctrine almost. And uh, one thing about biology is about living things. And for many years, they, they didn't, like we learned about genetics with Gregor Mendel, they didn't really understand how traits were passed on and, and you know, uh, how we get our specific traits and why we look the way we do and so on. And, you know, once the introduction of the microscope even helped a little, but not that much, but as technology has increased over the years, and uh, their ability to see smaller and smaller things and really understand uh, what DNA is. Uh, Watson and Crick came up with the, the model and uh, Rosner and Franklin, many people that worked together to understand DNA. But now uh, they have this central dogma, which is really uh, talks about how traits are expressed okay, within an organism. And you look here in the notes, it's talking about how is information transmitted by the cell. Uh, we know that DNA, we should know, or maybe you've been exposed to it before, it's really just information. And it's based on uh, four uh, nitrogen bases. Uh, DNA is made up of a double helix type thing. But really it's just a ladder with the sides. And it has these central the rungs in the ladder and then hydrogen bonds holding this together. There. Okay. And then these little rungs are just the bases. And A always goes with T, like that. C always goes with G, so if there's a G here, there's a C here, if there's a T here, A here. Just goes in like a code. Okay. They kind of knew about the DNA. One thing they learned about in the last, you know, de few decades is how that DNA turns into uh, a protein. And that's really what the central dogma is. And it kind of gives you the idea that the DNA is the blueprint for all of our traits and who we are. Uh, within each cell in the nucleus, so this is in the nucleus, you kind of know that already, uh, is a blueprint how to make us. So every one of us in most of our cells has instructions on how to make us. And so if that cell gets damaged, you can go to that part of the blueprint that tells you how to make that part that's damaged, and you can remake it. And most cells have that, which is really a great plan. Because if you want to, if something gets really damaged and you want to make it, you got to have the plans to do it. And if it's in all the cells, it's readily available. But really, the central dogma comes down to three things. That it starts out as our information and the cell starts out as DNA, it is then changed into RNA, and then becomes a protein, which is then used by the cell. That's really the central dogma. If we look a little further here, uh, there's three main steps to this. I'm going to look at the first one here. It's called replication. Okay. One thing you have to be able to do, though, if you have this DNA in a cell, and uh, new cells need to be made, you also uh, have to be, if you're making a new cell, that means you're making all the organelles, such as the nucleus. You have to be able to transmit that DNA to a new cell. You can't just cut it in half, because then you only have half. You gotta have, each cell has to have a complete copy. So they replicate it. They do that through use of enzymes and many other molecules, and uh, they make a copy. What's really interesting in how this occurs is they use a template. So a template is kind of like tracing paper. You probably don't know what that is, but if you're young enough, and if you have little brothers and sisters, they used to make them, I'm not sure they do anymore, but they had this really light paper, and they would lay it over what's something you might want to draw, and then you could trace it, and, you could, and it would look really nice, just like with the drawing underneath. Okay. A template is kind of like a guide. And how this works in DNA is you have this ladder, okay. and if you want to make a new copy, 
you could just make a completely new uh, molecule, but there's really no need to do that. What you can do instead is you can pull this apart, break these hydrogen bonds, and then kind of split this apart. If this is going to work. So it won't work here, but I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to erase this whole thing here. I'm going to erase it. Okay. So what happens is, again, if we move this piece further apart, it kind of splits, though. So this thing gets split apart. So if I can draw this all right. Okay. We won't show this bottom part. We'll show it a little bit here. Okay. So this all gets split. See, when it come, does, it comes in and builds a new molecule like this. And the original is part of the new one. So every time you make a new DNA molecule, half a molecule is the original, which is really cool. Because the chance of making a mistake is m minimized greatly if you have half of the original molecule. And replication is just a process where DNA is copied. It starts at something like this, where it splits. This is called the replication work. And you have lots of DNA, millions of base pairs. You wonder what it would be hard to do, a million, copy all those. And how it does it is it starts many replication forks all at the same time. And they replace base pairs as you're going. And I forget how many minutes it is. Like 18 minutes or something to do a complete molecule. I could be wrong on that time. But it's, it's you know, not it's extremely long, but long enough. But replication is just a process where DNA is copied. And it has all these different enzymes, helicase and DNA polymerase and so on. But it just brings in new base pairs and s or splits it first and then, um, then brings in the new base pairs, lines them up correctly and then eventually as it splits this replication for just keep splitting, they end up with two complete DNA molecules. That's replication. That's one part of the central dogma. Another part is something called transcription. So if in a cell you need to make something like some kind of protein, um, you read the blueprint, or say you know, you say you're going to build a tree house, or you're going to build a little model car. You look at the directions. Okay. So if the cell wants to make something, it needs to look at the directions. It looks at the directions on the DNA. The only problem is it can't leave. It's kind of protected. You don't want, you know, you don't want to take the directions on how to make something that valuable and take it somewhere and leave them and not be able to find them because then you'd be done. Or you damage them and then you, you don't know what they look like anymore. You can't build it anymore. So DNA is, is large and it's cut in a nucleus they can't leave. So somehow it has to be copied and taken where it's needed. Transcription is that process. And in transcription, this occurs in the nucleus. It's kind of interesting. But it takes DNA and turns it into and RNA. And DNA and RNA are very similar. And DNA is, and really the, the main differences are DNA is double stranded, RNA is single stranded. So we do this. Write this down. DNA, RNA. So this is double stranded. This is single. So what that means is it's got this hydrogen between its double strands. RNA is just single. And, this, and DNA is much longer, it's the whole thing. RNA is just a small piece. So if you want to make a skin cell, you just need a section of the DNA to make it. You don't need to make a complete body, you just need the skin. So just a small section. And one other thing is DNA has a T, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. 
here, it has adenine, doesn't have thymine, it has something called uracil, and then it has cytosine to go on. They're similar, but doesn't use thymine, use, use uracil instead. Okay, so it has, RNA though, also has several types. It has messenger, it has transfer. Those are the two we're going to talk about here. Um, there's another type we'll talk about in a minute. The messenger RNA is actually the DNA that's copied and leaves the nucleus. Okay? And uh, transfer RNA we'll talk about in a minute as well. There's also another type. It's called ribosomal RNA. And that's what makes ribosomes where the proteins are eventually made. Okay? But uh, DNA, this long strand, whatever's needed, like it may, say you burned your skin and you need skin cells. The DNA, the RNA comes in and copies, makes a small copy, a single strand of copy, and then that can leave the nucleus and goes to a uh, ribosome and uh, makes the skin you cell you need that got damaged. Okay? Transcription is that process. So DNA is inside this nucleus, can't leave, and you need, you need to make something from that DNA. So you can't take the directions out. So what you do is you send somebody in, the messenger RNA, he copies all the directions on how to make it, he comes out with the directions. Okay, that's transcription. So if we keep moving forward, the last part of the central dogma, and that is translation. Translation is the part where you now have this messenger RNA and it turns into, it's turned into a protein. Okay. Uh, this occurs at a ribosome and in the endoplasmic reticulum sometimes. Now if you remember uh, from cells, uh, cells have many different organelles. One of them is this passageways called endoplasmic reticulum, ER. And within the ER, this rough ER, that has ribosomes. Those ribosomes attach themselves to the messenger RNA and then make a protein. Okay could also occur in just the cytoplasm itself. Ribosomes are freely floating, and they can also attach themselves to a messenger RNA and make uh, a protein as well. So, and the protein is just, you know, it builds these amino acids, which, which are the basic parts of a protein. They attach themselves together and, uh, and form this long protein chain, and then they form a certain shape, and it could be an enzyme, any kind of different protein the body needs, and then it makes what it needs. Okay. But this is the central dogma. We have replication, just talking about making DNA, and then you have transcription, which is making RNA, and then you have translation, which is making Protein. That's the central dogma. Something they didn't understand for many, many years. How does this all work? What is, what is the part that makes up uh, our genetic info? And uh, it's kind of when you really examine some of the history, they originally thought that DNA wasn't that important, and they were more looking at proteins. But they didn't really understand the central dogma of you know how one thing leads to another and leads to another. So originally, we're looking at proteins, messenger RNA, until they uh, came up with DNA being this foundational molecule that really determines most things in the cell. So make sure you check out the other notes that go along with this from uh, Khan Academy. They're very good. Help you. They'll help you understand even better. And also make sure you're completing your readings and everything else. And uh, hopefully, this is making a lot of sense to you using all the resources available to you. If you have any questions for me, make sure you email and let me know.